As a young boy, he grew up just down the road from Oyama Kaizuka, a famous spiritual training ground for Okinawa's infamous shamans, the Yuta. Half doctors, half shamans. That's how the populace thought of them. Ever since he could remember, his parents always told him, you must never go there, it's too dangerous. But then one day, a family from the north of the island moved in two houses down. They also had a son the same age, and he was a rather rambunctious child. The two boys quickly became friends, and they ran around town with their own little gang, getting up to mischief. One day, as the sun was setting, the neighbor's boy suggested they head over to the Yuta training ground. Someone had been training there recently, and their cries were getting wilder and more terrifying as the nights went on. Whatever that Yuta was facing, they seemed to be struggling with it. It's a curse, the young boy's parents said. He had no idea what went on in Oyama Kaizuka when the Yuta trained there. He didn't know that the Yuta invited evil spirits in, and then worked hard to exorcise them again. Little by little, they invited even stronger spirits, training their powers like a bodybuilder trains their muscles. But if a Yuta was lacking in skill, those spirits would eat away at them, bit by bit, until finally escaping into the wild. The Yuta they heard screaming night after night was a woman. All the boys' gang agreed. If the Yuta was in trouble, then they should help her. They entered the back path through the trees. Trees so dense it was like a thick forest. The concrete path turned into gravel, but they pressed forth. The boy's heart beat wildly in his chest. His legs shook with each scream that pierced the night. Finally, they found the woman. She really was a Yuta, and it really was a Yuta training ground after all. They weren't just wild rumours. She groaned, her voice raw and harsh. Black coils of something the boy didn't understand seemed to float in the air around her. The neighbour's boy had no plan, but he stepped forward and approached the woman. She saw him coming and turned to look at him. Her eyes were possessed, black and bloodshot. Her face was pale blue. She looked just like the spirit she was supposed to be fighting. She ran at the boys, screaming and groaning. The boys panicked. An unknown creature was running right for them. They fled in different directions, screaming in terror, eventually making their way back to the public hall. But one of the boys was missing. They looked everywhere for him, but he was nowhere to be seen. Did the Utah get him? Or perhaps whatever spirit was possessing the Utah? Did he get lost in the trees? Why wasn't he back yet? Then they saw him. He came limping towards them, the skin on his knees scraped off. He just fell over while escaping, he said. That was all. But the boys didn't care. They were just glad he was safe. But ten minutes later, they noticed a change in him. Dark bags were growing under his eyes, which stared out blankly before him. Drool dribbled down his chin. He groaned, and then fell over. They called an ambulance, but... The boy remained unconscious. Half doctor, half shaman. That's what the boy's parents said. His friend needed help. Help that only a shaman could give. He told them about what happened, and begged for them to find a skilled yuta to help his friend. The boy was possessed by 59 different spirits. The spirits of those summoned to the yuta training grounds. It was a miracle they were able to save him, but save him they did. The boy had no memory of what happened in the time he was missing. One moment he was running from the female Yuta, and the next he was in front of the public hall with his friends. But there was one thing they were certain of. After that night, nobody heard the cries of the female Yuta again. Oyama Kaizuka is an important place of cultural heritage in Okinawa. It's also said to be one of the most haunted spots in Japan. Located about 700 metres from the Ginoan Seaside Park, Oyama Kaizuka has long been an important religious and burial site for the people of Okinawa. 
It sits deep in the forest and can be identified by a small shrine that sits before a cave. That cave was used as an air raid shelter during the Second World War, and so people in modern times have grown to fear it. Past the shrine is said to be the land of the dead, and those who enter may never return. Even the local council has to constantly remind people not to enter, a rarity for ghost spots around Japan. Oyama Kaizuka, which translates directly as large mountain shell heap, is these days said to be a training ground for Okinawan spirit mediums, known as Yuta. Yuta are mediums born with particularly strong spiritual powers, and Oyama Kaizuka is sacred land to them. Because the spirits are so strong there, they can hone their natural abilities and make them stronger, much like a martial artist trains his body for a fight. The area is also famous because the caves were used as an air raid shelter during the Second World War. Upon hearing Japan lost the war, the people taking refuge killed themselves, fearing the American soldiers would kill them anyway. This, combined with the fact that Yuta trained there, makes Oyama Kaizuka the perfect location for ghost tales and creepy legends. It's said to be dangerous for anyone with spiritual abilities to enter the grounds because of the strength of the spirits there. There's a sign placed before the grounds that says, Past this point is sacred land, so please do not play here. The locals also make a point not to go near it at night. People who do make the mistake of entering the sacred grounds are said to hear an excruciating ringing in their ears experience sleep paralysis, and also face potential injury upon returning home. One story tells of four men who used the caves as a place to find shelter from the rain. However, as the rain finally let up and the men tried to leave, one man was grabbed by the legs and dragged back into the cave. His companions fled and the next day he was found dead. The incident made local newspapers. It's also said that those who visit Oyama Kaizuka by car will find they have troubles on their way home. This can include lights not working, radios suffering from interference, and other mechanical problems. Those who take photos or record video footage at the shrine and cave may often find they've captured the ghosts of children on film, and you can find several of these home videos on the internet today. Another story tells of a foreign couple who moved to the area and were unaware of the significance of Oyama Kaizuka. They took pictures of the shrine, and when they developed them several days later, they found a white shadow shaped like a katana, and several white glowing orbs in the pictures. When they asked the locals about it, they told the couple the truth of the area, and the couple grew fearful. Yet nothing bad happened to them and the villagers told them that the local gods must have been welcoming them instead. The sacred site once featured on an episode of Getsuyo Kara Yorufukashi. The program interviewed several locals who all agreed the area was terribly dangerous, and it was well known that anyone who visited the area would find themselves sick or injured once they returned home. The power of the spirits that haunt Oyama Kaizukura said to be so strong that even simply investigating the area can cause the researcher to fall ill. I'll have to get back to you on that one. There is no denying that Oyama Kaizuka has important cultural significance to the people of Okinawa. It's generally not recommended that people enter dark caves unassisted either, and considering its horrific history, it's not too difficult to see why Oyama Kaizuka is one of the most famous ghost spots in Okinawa the only part of Japan directly touched by the Second World War.